Hi, this is Dave and welcome to the weekly market recap closing out the week for Friday, April the 26th, 2013. So pretty uneventful um, week in the, uh, at least in the stock indices. Um, taking a look at the uh, Dow from the uh, daily chart perspective as we usually do. Uh, let's just jump right into it. We've got, um, you know, in last week's video what we were talking about was we were talking about a, a break of this trend line here. And then we were talking about, you know, uh, one of two scenarios happening where, you know, we could, uh, we broke the trend line here. And then what we were looking for was either a retest of this trend line and then a potential failure of this level again, right in and around, uh, you know, these lows around 14, uh, 397. So this was one scenario we were looking at to get on to the uh, bear side of the market. So that would have made us a bear. And the other thing that we were looking at here is if we actually, uh, let me just change the pen color, if we actually held this trend line here and we broke back above it to look for a potential retest uh, of these highs. So uh, essentially what happened was this other scenario played out where we broke this trend line, we pushed back to the high side, we held support, um, but we haven't really done anything. We're just right in the middle of the range between the support level and uh, and the previous high we're right you know we're somewhere right in the middle here and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like we really um, you know there's any decisive action so until we actually break you know 13 or sorry 14 397 I'm more bullish than bearish on the market looking for a potential retest of these highs so the question now is you know we've just been going sideways for the last you know three days the question is are we going to push up to these highs and fail or are we going to push up to these highs and break above these highs or are we just going to you know kind of come back down to support and fail so or even hold support and just go sideways for a while so at this point in time I'm not interested in the short side I'm but I'm also actually not interested in the long side um, I'm just really looking to see how this market is going to resolve itself uh, you know, outside of uh, outside of this range between 14,397 and 14,821. So until we actually decisively, um, you know, break out of this this sort of a range here, I'm not really that interested uh, in the uh, the stock indices at this point in time. So let's just take a, a look at the um, at the S and P futures. You know, same sort of scenario. Uh, you know, we have the exact you know, the exact same scenario going on there. I'm not really going to spend too much time on it. Uh, let's took a, take a look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, same scenario, you know, where we uh, where we held support, we broke that trend line where we sort of retested these highs there, but we're really just effectively going sideways. The only interesting thing that I see here in the NASDAQ uh, that I find really interesting is we've sort of got this um, this sort of cut pattern happening. If you if you can see here, it's not a clean cup, but it's it's not bad. I mean, you've got um, this level here. Let me just actually mark this level. So this is an interesting pattern. You've got this sort of the highs here. Actually, it is a fairly clean cup. So you've got this, um, you know, the sell off, the uh, the complex sort of bottoming, you know, the selling or buying buying it back up to the uh, retest the highs. It formed a, a sort of a handle here. Let me just uh, redraw this. So here you've got a high, you've sold off, you came back up, retested the high, and then you sort of put in this handle area, and now you're pushing back up. So if we break, you know, if we break above these highs here, then uh, you know that would be a really interesting pattern on the uh, on the Nasdaq futures at least. So getting above 28, let's say 28.55 in the Nasdaq futures uh, would really pique my interest. And would really, um, you know, I'd, I'd really be watching this closely to see if that's going to happen. If we fail from here, then uh, you know the same rules apply uh, to the uh, the previous analysis and the other indices. But this is um, this is a really uh, a really interesting pattern forming here on the Nasdaq. So let's um, let's jump over to the transports. So transport, same sort of pattern here. It looked like we were going to fail, but we held support and we effectively put in a, uh, 
you know, a minor sort of triangle pattern or wedge pattern. And we're just sort of, sort of, sort of breaking to the high side. So at this point in time, um, you know, it's sort of the same, same scenario and the same analysis as the stock indices. Uh, look to see if we're going to, if we hold this breakout, if we're going to retest these highs um, or, you know, break through the highs. At this point in time, I really, I don't really want to hazard a guess to, uh, to say which way it's going to go. Um, we really need to get out of that, you know, above those highs to get anything going to the high side, above 62.83 or 62.84. Um, you know, or we need to come back down and break the bottom of this pattern to get something going to the downside. And if we did get something going to the downside, for example, if we came through, let's say we failed here and we came through and we broke this decisively, then what I'd be looking for uh, personally is I'd be looking for some type of, you know, meaningful retracement, let's say to the, you know, 50 50%, 61.8% retracement. If we break this pattern, if we break to the upside, um, or if we hold rather, we've sort of broken. If we hold to the upside, I'd be looking for a retest of these highs and then looking to see if we're actually going to break through the highs or not. So that's all I really have there. Um, let's take a look at the currencies. So here's the, um, the dollar index. Dollar index, you know, broke the downtrend line as well, held support down and around, uh, you know, these levels here, 81.77. And then, uh, you know, we're right back down into 82.50. So we're just holding above 82.50, you know, that key level we've been talking about for weeks. Uh, we're holding in above 82.50 at 82.57. Uh, it looks like we put in a, uh, a lower high from this level, uh, but from this level, we look like we're potentially establishing a higher low. So, you know, same sort of scenario. We really need guidance out of what is becoming um, obvious as a sort of consolidation um, range now. It looks like the markets may potentially be setting up, uh, you know, for some consolidation. So we're always looking to see if the markets are going to trend. But at this point in time, you know, this is where Darvis Box has become to me a little bit more important where we're not really getting any high side, we're not getting any low side, so we're just really setting up a range here. So a breakout of this sort of really badly drawn box would uh, would pique my interest, but you know as long as it's trading within this box, I'm really not that interested in the uh, in the dollar index. Just to note that it is holding support. Let's take a look at the euro. So the euro is holding in right at a dollar thirty, same sort of scenario. Um, same sort of scenario and you know if we broke actually if we did one of these scenarios here and then we broke above this swing point about a dollar 32 ish um, then I would really get bullish on the euro but at this point in time it really is just holding support and looking to see if it'll hold these lows uh, and break these highs I'm not really interested in this sort of dead zone in the middle so that's um, that's what I'd be looking at in the euro. Um, let me just mark that level there. It's about a dollar thirty-two, somewhere around a dollar thirty-two. Let's just make it a dollar thirty-two, probably a dollar, th yeah, dollar thirty-two oh five. Let's call it dollar thirty-two ten. If we can get above, clearly above a dollar thirty-two, then I'd be interested in the euro. You know, back to the high side, and then what I'd be looking for. Uh, personally would be a retest of these highs so at this point in time as long as we hold this low if we break the low then that would you know change that scenario um, you know decisively a retest of these lows I'd be looking to see if it would hold and then start going sideways as well so really not a lot uh, on the euro so let's jump into some more interesting markets let's take a look at the gold futures Excuse me, the gold futures. This was a trade that I actually took last week. It was a nice trade. Uh, I netted about 48% on my options. And the setup, as I outlined in, um, um, you know, this is one of the better trades that I've done in a while. Uh, I haven't been really doing a lot of swing trading. So this was sort of a jump back into swing trading. So we had this sort of ferocious, um, you know, butt kicking, um, you know, 65 points down here. And then we had the 125, you know, dollar or point uh, flush down, high volume, you know, kicking in. We had a lot of volume kicking in. So what I was looking for 
was I was looking for it to establish this tight range. And then the uh, as I outlined in last week's video, the setup was a break above this level here. And it happened on this day here last Friday. So 1403 was the level. It probed above it, you know, in the overnight, I guess it was. Um, by the time I actually saw it, it had probed above here. And then it came right back down to 1403. So what I did was I bought a call option on the GLD based on, you know, this chart on the gold futures. But I traded the actual GLD using a Delta 70 call option. That's some terrible writing. Delta 70 call option. Terrible writing. Um, and what I did was I, I established the position when it was around memory serves me it just probed back it probed above and then probed back down below this level so it was about a dollar i mean uh 1402.90 was when i established the position it pushed higher it consolidated a little bit but you can see it really it really held that level i'll just zoom in a little bit it held that level nicely um right in there uh, 1403 and then i was looking for it to get above you know this level here around 14 1440 let me just pause the video for a second okay sorry just had a phone call there I had to uh, stop the video so I'm not sure where I left off there um, so let me just rerun this analysis really quickly apologize so you know we had the flush move on high volume and what I was looking for was to take a long at the break of the range that was established so I just was patient and I waited for it to establish a range it took this was really the the bar of importance here um, which was establishing, you know, a break above the high to get long and a break of the low to stop out. So what I was looking at here, stop and along above, you know, the break of 1403, which was the high of this bar here. So essentially on this day, it took one. So this was a flush out move and then it took one, two, three. And then on the fourth day, it broke above, uh, got into the position. Uh, it actually had broken above and come all the way back down. And that's when I established it, the position around 1402.90. So right around, you know, the breakout point. But I, I was comfortable getting in because it had already had broken above and then came back down. So then, you know, fast forward, uh, I got into the position on, this was last, last Friday. Last Friday. And essentially, you know, we pushed up overnight to uh, 14.40. So 1440 was providing some immediate resistance. By the time the market opened, uh, trading the GLD, it had come back down. The next day it was back down to, you know, break even. I think I was up a few percentage points on the, uh, the option trade. And then, you know, over the next couple of days, it started going. So then, you know, fast forward to Friday, uh, it came right into this level here. And I was looking at, um, let me just jump over to the 60 minute chart. Because I had marked a level. Okay, so this is the level that I was looking for. This is the 60-minute chart, and I had marked a level here, 1479. So I was looking for a move all the way up to potentially 1500, or where the 20-period moving average was coming down on the daily chart, and that level coincided right around, you know, 1479, 1480. So I actually got out of the position somewhere around this area here. I think it was around 1461. 1462 because I had to get going on Friday and I didn't really want to I didn't know if it was actually going to hit this level and I didn't want to you know the move was substantially completed and I didn't really want to risk you know that we weren't going to actually push right into this level but we ended up pushing into this level and then if you noticed we sort of put in a double top at that level so this um, 1480 uh, now in gold is the immediate resistance uh, in the gold futures, it's not to say that we won't, you know, break through it. Uh, I'm not sure if we will, but, the, you know, the easy move was done. So at this point in time, you know, we captured the easy move. I got out a little bit early, but it was a nice trade. Uh, I netted somewhere around 48% in the option in one week. So that was um, that was a pretty decent trade. And then you can see, look at all the, uh, the volume coming in right around here on this 60-minute bar. Th over, you know, 35,000 contracts trading right in around there so you can see that the people that were still stuck long 
um, or stuck short were probably, you know, the theory goes they were probably going to get out around this level if they were still in. People that were on the other side that got long closer to the lows like I did were looking at this area to get out. So this was obviously going to be an area of contention, you know, using support resistance analysis. So um, at this point in time, the easy move's done. Now what am I looking for in gold? Well, now what I'm looking for in gold is we've hit the immediate resistance. Let's get back to the daily chart. I do think it's possible that we could come up and test, you know, some of these higher levels here at this um, at this um, falling trend line and this falling trend line. So, you know, anywhere between, let's say, 1525, you know, because this is going to come down as we move forward, 1525 to 1600, I think is a possibility. So as long as we hold these lows down here, these spike lows, what I'm actually looking for here is sort of either, you know, a push up here or um, what would be more reasonable is if we actually did this kind of scenario where we pull back, establish a higher low, and then push back off. So what I'd be looking for here is I'd be, I'd be more comfortable with this sort of scenario. And then when we broke this high here, when we broke this, if this became a higher high, um, higher low, and then we came back above the higher high again, right in around 1479, and we were, you know, there was conviction to break that market. This looks like would be a potentially good area. So that's sort of what I'm, that's sort of what I'm looking for, you know, uh, to play out in terms of a pattern, in, pr in terms of a structure in gold. Um, at this point in time, obviously nobody really knows what's going to happen. You know, we could, you know, we could do, you know, we could do this, you know, pretty quickly, just like we did here, or we could, you know, do that scenario, or, you know, we could come right back down and retest the lows. So I'm bullish on gold as long as we hold, you know, these spike lows in and around here. So that's all I have on that. Hope it makes sense. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the silver gold's, um, gold sister. And silver was sort of the same scenario. You know, I was looking at this potential box here. Um, if I just extend that forward a little bit, uh, I think gold had more potential to move, but uh, I just liked it better. But they're basically trading uh, around the same idea. So, you know, silver broke this level here after it established this sort of tighter range. And then it came right into its 21 period exponential moving average. So that's all I was really expecting in the short term. I think the same analysis potentially holds true for gold or for silver as it did for gold. You can see stochastics are really overdone. The MACD looks like it wants to roll to the high side. So that's not to say it won't do that sort of scenario. But as long as we're trading, as long as we're trading below the 21 exponential moving average, I'm still net net. Um, you know, gold is still, or gold and silver are still net, net negative, but I'm still bullish on it as long as it holds above, you know, the low. I hope that, you know, that's sort of conflicting, but uh, I hope that makes sense. It's a more of a support and resistance sort of scenario. So let's take a look at the uh, natural gas. So natural gas here, in last week's video, we were talking about how we sort of set up a double bottom. Um, we sort of set up a double bottom and we sort of set up a cup pattern. We broke above the cup here and then we seem to have, you know, failed, but we came right back down into support. We slipped through. Now we're holding support. What I'd be looking at at this point in time is, um, let me just zoom into this level here. At this point in time, if we hold support here and we come back up above 427 or 428, uh, right in and around this area here, uh, then I'd be, you know, I'd I'd be bullish on uh, the natural gas again. So right now I don't think we're, you know, actionable. But where I do like it is back above four dollars and twenty eight cents. If we can break four twenty eight, let's say, then I like it back to the high side for at least a retest of the highs and maybe even a push, you know, even maybe even a push even even higher. So hope that makes sense as well. Um, Let's see here. Any markets we didn't look at? Oh yeah, let's look at crude oil. We already looked at, uh, let's see, the dollar index, the euro. Let's take a look at crude oil. So in last week's video, if memory serves me correctly, um, you know, we were essentially looking for a bullish breakout of this wedge pattern and um, the opposite happened. 
where we had a you know a bearish break of this wedge pattern here and we had come back down into 8691 uh, I believe I had mentioned that we were we were essentially at support here so I wasn't really interested I wasn't interested at all in the uh, in the short side um, because if you didn't catch the move you know from this area to this area then essentially um, you missed the you know you missed the short opportunity here you know from here to here so essentially I was um, looking at this as a, an area of support um, I wasn't interested in the short side uh, the scenario that I was more interested in is what uh, Thomas Bolkowski refers to as uh, a busted pattern so you can see here we um, it's not a busted pattern yet but you can see here we broke the pattern to the downside we didn't really follow through we broke this trend line here okay we broke this trend line here so we're sort of you know we're back in the pattern and you can see we're sort of being accumulated in this area so if we were to actually break back above this pattern here then this would be this is where we would have a busted pattern scenario and in this case these are areas where you just go with it according you know to Dom according to Thomas Bolkowski so that's sort of what I would be interested in is this sort of scenario here you know I wasn't interested in trying to short at support and you can see why you know we pushed back off that pretty high you know that's uh, let's call it 87 to 93 it's actually a little bit more than that but that's six dollars in crude oil right off of support so this is sort of more the scenario I'd be looking for if we were to do this and then push off to the high side um, as I've been mentioning in previous videos 100 to 101 is uh, is going to be resistance so you know you've got some serious challenge points up above but if we're ready to get going then you know that's sort of the area and then if we can break above that we could get something really going to the high side uh, if we're not able to do that then you know essentially we're just going to be stuck in this huge dead zone um, and we're just going to be in a in a consolidation phase so I'm uh, at this point in time I'm really cautious on the markets in general all the markets because I'm wondering if we're going to enter into a non trending uh, consolid uh, consolidation phase in the market where you know we're just going to build some value we're just going to go sideways so um, so we'll be keeping an eye on that and we'll see where we are next week let's um let's just see if we missed any markets. so we did uh, gold silver crude oil natural gas the major currencies let's take a look at the uh, 30 year um, so the 30 year bond um, looks really really bullish here uh, we're just challenging some highs and uh, one of the things that me and the guys were talking about in the trading room is um, this is a workspace that I'm uh, that I've designed based on um, uh, Don Villalou and uh, Brooke Thackeray and John Villalou's um, seasonality studies so if we look at the 30-year bond the 30-year bond is coming in is coming into season the seasonal start date is May the 9th okay so it has a seasonal start date of May the 9th so what you're doing uh, with this methodology essentially is you're looking for three weeks before a window of three weeks before and three weeks after the average seasonal start date so you can see here that uh, based on this methodology it's green light you see how it's green there as opposed to these that are you know they're just you know they're not green light so this is you know the seasonal start date to go um, it's valid until essentially the third of October 2013 that's when the seasonal end date is October the third rather um, you can see that we are trading above the 20 period moving average here and you can see that the the relative strength we are um, excuse me we are essentially outperforming uh, the S&P 500 and that's what this indicator here is telling us that's what this indicator here is telling us and you can see the uh, the stochastics are essentially uh, you know bullish so using this sort of um, analysis based on Don's work you know you've got some obvious challenge points up above here um, based on the uh, seasonality study everything is a go um, but you've got some resistance up above here at let me just zoom in here 151 and 330 seconds now I'm looking at the 30 uh, the 30 year in the the futures market um, 
what I would actually trade if I were going to trade this would be probably an option on either the TLT, TLH, VGLT. I think the TLT is probably, you know, the most liquid of the, of the assets, if I'm not mistaken, um, you know, the ETF to track that. So if you look at this, though, from a pattern analysis perspective, you know, you've got a low and a high in place. And, you know, you've got this sort of down channel. And you can see that we broke above that down channel. We've been consolidating and now we're, you know, pushing off. So this, I like this pattern. You know, I like the break of this downtrend line of this channel. And I like how, um, you know, I like the pattern analysis and I like how it's in season. It's kind of hard to buy it when you're so close to resistance. But this is essentially a valid trade. I'll be assessing it this week to see if I want to get into it. I just want to look at a couple of other factors, like, for example, um, one of the factors I'd like to look at is, you know, what what is the average move that this makes on a, you know, on a seasonal basis? What's the average uh, amount that it it moves, um, you know, on a percentage basis over, let's say, the last 10 years? So if there's potentially enough room in the trade, I may look at, you know, taking this trade with a stop below the 20 period moving average. You know, because we broke this pattern, I think we're probably, if we're going to follow through, we're probably going to hold these levels, you know, at the lows here. So a stop below the 20 would make sense for a decent risk reward ratio, at least back up to the highs. See if we can break this resistance at the highs and get something going more to the upside. So all of these instruments, um, you know, are essentially a go for the most part. Um, here's the, um, the 10 year. The 10 year is already above its highs above resistance, above the 20 period moving average. Um, the There's the two year. Two year is, uh, you know, forming a nice little cut pattern here and is challenging its highs going back from uh, July of uh, 2012, I guess. And if you look at the five year, um, the five year is uh, above its resistance. So th I just, this was an interesting trade that I just wanted to point out. Um, this is some of the stuff that we're going to be working on more. Uh, the um, the active group and I in, in our live trading room here um, at Market Trading Concepts. And, um, you know, here's another trade we were looking at, the XLP. Um, it's in season. We were all a little too chicken to get into it. This was the uh, seasonal start date here. And, you know, we've been pushing higher, but we're all a little too chicken. We're just watching this one really go by the XLP tracks consumer staple. So we really like um, Don, Brooke, and John's work, and uh, we're going to be using it more going forward, and uh, we'll be sharing some of that stuff there. We'll be populating our worksheet so we have a you know a yearly calendar of different things that go off at different times of the year. Uh, the system green lights us when we're in season, and when some of the other criteria according to, uh, according to their work is actually valid. So, um, so that's something we're looking at there. Um, if you're still watching this video, quick reminder, we have a uh, meetup tomorrow. Let me just pull this up. We have a meetup tomorrow, Burlington. Let's see, Burlington Active Traders and Investors. Okay, so we have, let me just log in here. So in tomorrow's meetup, we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be covering uh, Burlington Active Traders and Investors meetup. We're going to be covering getting back to basics in order to move forward in advance. So this is going to be covering um, uh, an in-depth look at using trend lines, horizontal support resistance, and select chart patterns. Um, you know, understanding when the trend is in your favor. Um, it's it's actually going to be some really really good stuff. And um, for those that are not able to attend, um, we don't have a lot of people signed up for it, as you can see here. Um, but we'll probably get, you know, between five and ten, between five and ten people showing up. A lot of people don't actually register. Um, they just sort of show up and, uh, you know, they're at the gate there first thing in the morning. So we usually average, you know, usually a minimum of five people up to 20 people per meeting. We'll probably get somewhere around eight, eight people tomorrow. If you're interested, I suggest that you um, register and we'll look forward to seeing you. It's going to be a really good presentation. I did... I did the same presentation to about um, 25 members of the Oakville uh, uh, CSTA, the uh, Canadian Society of Technical Analysts, in last month's meeting, and uh, lots of positive feedback. So look forward to seeing you all that can make it there. Um, if not, no worries. We'll catch you at uh, you know uh, a future meetup 
or at a future CSTA meeting or, you know, maybe live here in person. So um, good trading, good investing, and we will see you soon. All the best.